The second case is in the District of, well, two different cases in the District of Columbia. They decided to add the Trump organization suit to a uh, inaugural dispute, which I think is ridiculous. But, you know, again, it's D.C., so if it's Trump, all the rules get thrown out. And the other one was, you know, the congressman who sued because Trump inflicted emotional distress on them and violated the Civil Rights Act, <laughs> which by itself is. Which congressman? I believe. I think I know, but I'm going to make a mistake. Let me guess. Let me guess. Swalwell. Yeah. Yeah. Him and yes. Benny Thompson, I believe, is I, the other one. I tell you, I know I know more than I know, but I. So Swalwell. Robert, could you. Um, Swalwell, if I'm. Uh, let me get the chat out of here. Sorry. Swalwell, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he's the uh, California congressman who threatened to use nukes against Americans because if you want to fight a war, we've got nukes and that'll be a long, a short lived battle. I believe he had an affair with a Chinese spy. And I'm not saying this to mock. You want to stay rich? You want to stay happy? Don't have affairs. Set that aside. If you have and affairs, normally, if you want to be on the foreign intelligence committee, you shouldn't be having spies with our main adversary. Just saying. <laughs> well, but really, it's not a problem for the Democrats. So, so he's had it's it's not rumor, right? He, it's a confirmed he had an affair or a relationship with a confirmed Chinese spy. And yet he is still sitting on committees. Oh, yes. yes. How does that work? No limitations whatsoever. Fang, fang. I mean, they allowed him to, you know, grandstand on impeachment related to phone calls with Ukraine, you know, after this was known. So <laughs> it's it's absurd. The whole suit is ridiculous. It's a mix. You, there's a, the, in the 1870s, they passed parts of this, all the different civil rights acts for the most part, though they've been amended over time. But this this one was mainly for dealing with the Ku Klux Klan, not allowing U.S. marshals and others to implement federal policy in the South after the Civil War. And so uh, it's it's been very limited in its application in general. And so it's ridiculous to apply this as if that's what happened. But you know that's going to be the case, because here's a motion to dismiss. And the judge starts off with like a two-page introduction that just, I, I you know, he could have said, here's the facts that have to be assumed is true. Da, da, da. But that's not the nature of his ruling. It, it, it's clear he's on his high horse about January 6th from day one. Pretending things are fact that are just not um, by putting it in introduction uh, outside of the statement of facts section where you could, you know, then you could apply it in a certain legal standard. But the the case, he had to throw it out against Don Jr. and Giuliani. The whole case is crap. But he found all these excuses for why Trump could be sued. Even the U.S. Supreme Court said you cannot sue the president, period, for anything he did while he was president, period. No, no, no carve out. The uh, this included someone who was fired by Nixon for retaliatory purposes for exposing certain corruption in the Nixon administration. That was the suit the Supreme Court made clear. Can't sue. Can't sue. It has been repeatedly applied to the benefit of Democratic presidents in the District of Columbia in particular for the Clintons, for Obama. So now they come in and it's Trump. And all of a sudden, this judge is going to great lengths to figure out how do I carve out an exception with such plain language from the U.S. Supreme Court? I say this with my own caveat. I don't think anybody should be immune. I think everybody should be subject to suit. Uh, that, so that part I don't have a problem with. I have a problem with carving out exceptions just for your political opponents, which is what this court did. So under the existing Supreme Court precedent, he decided that Trump is magically outside of this uh, uh, immunity uh, because his statements don't concern his official duties. And I was like, that's kind of interesting because I brought a suit against Elizabeth Warren and Deborah Halland uh, for things that clearly did not relate to their official duties, and they have much smaller immunity than the president does. The Westfall Act is much more limited than the president's immunity. And they said that anything a senator says and anything a congresswoman says is completely immune from any defamation suit. But somehow it's Trump. And even though he's talking about the certification of his own reelection, that doesn't relate to his presidential duties. It's a preposterous claim by the court. But the court doesn't stop there. The next statement by the court is that Trump was imminently inciting violence with his speech. He notes that, of course, imminent violence didn't happen to the people who heard his speech. He admits that the imminent incitement standard is extremely restrictive on what you can bring outside the First Amendment. So what he does is he actually kind of changes the language. The language is directly incite. He changes it to indirectly imminently incite. Now, he doesn't have imminence. It's obvious he doesn't have imminence, but he just pretends he does. Uh, if, if a generic speech where Trump specifically said, go protest peacefully and patriotically, but th that was a called imminent incitement of lawless action, 
than every speech can be. It's a ludicrous decision by a political hack of a judge pretending to be impartial as another reminder that judges, particularly those appointed by Democrats in the District of Columbia, are not capable of being independent judges. And some congressmen should start coming up with a list of judges who need to be impeached because they cannot perform their oath. They dishonor the robes they wear. They disobey the oaths they took. And there need to be consequences somewhere when it keeps getting this egregious and this predictable. Robert, so the first thing I guess is um, w- when he said peaceful, you, you didn't hear it properly because it was a dog whistle. It meant violence. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, when you said when you said you know he's talking about his duties, I'm just Robert. I have to do it. I have to do it. This is the first time ever. It's the first time ever we're going to do this. We're doing it. We're doing it, people. I, I couldn't help. <laughs> Duty. Okay, I'm st- <laughs> I'm stopping there so we don't get copy struck. But Robert. Um, so th- this was on a motion to dismiss. Th- this is now basically sh- long story well, short. Well, the judge made clear what his goal was. He says there'd be a lot of interesting discovery here. So he knows that they want to discover everything, you know, invade Trump's privacy and privileges again, as they've already allowed for the, the committee to do, the congressional committee to do. They want to take a deep dive and swim in it. And the court says particularly interested with this Roger Stone connection. It was, I mean, mo- almost every fact the judge said is false just false. Nobody lies more than federal judges lie. And it's just false fact after false fact after false fact. But putting that aside, motion to dismiss, he can get away with that to some degree, but he should have couched it differently. He said, assuming the complaint is true, da, da, da. he doesn't do that. Throughout the case, he just asserts these as absolute facts. He just takes those facts and says they are true as a matter of objective truth uh, and presumes that for the purposes of a lot of his his, his argument. The uh, But basically, it's it's the most extraordinary ruling to remove immunity in a way that's so politically discriminatory and so self-apparent that the at some point the Supreme Court should look at this case and reverse it because it's but, such bad logic and such bad rulings. I got to put lips along because my lips were so chapped from yesterday. They're still chapped. But Robert, so it was it was only the it was only it was only the dismissal of a dismissal, but only as it relates to Trump. So basically, they came and said dismiss it all, and the judge said, okay, we'll dismiss it for Don Trump Jr. Giuliani. But Trump will allow it to proceed because maybe in discovery they'll find well, something. So because that was his third claim. I mean, the civil, this specific civil rights law was meant to deal with uh, two different categories of it. One it was meant to deal with people injured in their person or their property, and the second was preventing uh, officials from doing their job. And if you study the history of the law, it was meant for executive officials. It was not meant for. Le- it's very dangerous to start applying this to legislative officials. Because you can start saying that lobbying now is a civil rights violation. The specific language is by force, intimidation, other unlawful criminal action. What this did, what this judge had to conclude was that there were sufficient facts to claim that Trump planned, conspired to plan, and joined to cause a riot for the purposes of imposing emotional distress on Democratic congressmen. That you, from a speech, you couldn't get there. But if you can get there from a speech, you can get there from lobbying, you can get there from public representation. I mean, this is an attempt to dramatically expand the law, to throw everybody underneath it. And if you can get the president, you can get anybody. And it's an attempt to criminalize speech. The lobbying, I could even understand it more easily for the lobbying because you're using money. So maybe the illicit means are not, uh, you know, threats or violence, but rather. uh, And well, I mean, bribery itself is criminal. But the uh, but the, the degree to which you're saying anything that could impact a congressman's emotional well-being, an injury to his person or property is generally never. In fact, the court admitted no court had ever found emotional injury to be sufficient. He just decided to invent it, uh, just add it to the equation. Uh, you know, he found very easy standing, which was by itself problematic. The other problem here was the the uh, idea that this was to pre- what to prevent them from doing what exactly from voting. From voting on electoral certification, they're actually meeting it in, in terms of uh, the, it's a different capacity. But that's not what the law, the law was intended to do things like preventing someone from arresting someone, preventing transfers of property, preventing, I mean, things like that. That's what the law was for. The idea that it would be to impact the, you know, cause, uh, the congressman is so distressed he couldn't vote. That wasn't true. He could vote. I mean, so it, it's getting ridiculous. Uh, so it's a ridiculous application of the civil rights laws, ridiculous application of uh, of the immunity provisions, ridiculous application of the First Amendment, and endangers everybody. Hopefully the courts will get involved and overturn it in time. But it's a but, bad ruling, another ruling that shows what a bunch of political hacks uh, occupy too many positions in the federal court. 
but it's it's it would be overturning the non dismissal. So like they'll yeah, just because otherwise we'll, Trump's subject to invasive discovery by these hat congressmen for two years. But, so if I was yeah. Trump and if I was subject to that, I would really dig into uh, Benny Thompson and, and Swalwell's history. They're claiming emotional distress. Well, let, let, let's see what what else might have caused some emotional distrust. Your corruption. But, you're sleeping with spies. Your other, you know, you get into it because a lot of these. People could not handle that same discovery. Of course, once the court suddenly step in and say that's not pertinent discovery. But this, this is a, will this say, is a they will say, decision. It's not a sincere legal decision. But how does it work on appealing this type of decision? Because the judge will say, look, I'm not going to overturn the oh, non-dismissal of the dismissal. You have to go up on interlocutory, uh, basically to request a writ of, effectively. Uh, but the Supreme Court in the past has done that in these kind of cases because they involve issues like presidential immunity, First Amendment limitations, et cetera. This court went too far, so hopefully the U.S. Supreme Court will step in.